thank you very much. And hello, Wisconsin. Thank you very much. What a great place. What a great place. What a place. We had such luck here four years ago. And I have a feeling we're gonna win. we will win by even more, I think. I really believe that. We're going to win by even more. Oh, we had a good time here, but I've been doing a good job for you. You're building all those ships and all that other stuff I gave you. All of that military equipment. Ten days from now, we are going to win this state, and we are going to win four more great years in the White House. And by the way, just so you know, you think there's a lot of people here? 20,000. There's about 25,000 outside trying to get in. Would anybody like to give them their place? Would anybody like to be nice? No? No. At the debate this week, the American people saw the contrast between a 47-year-old career politician, if you call him that, who used public office to enrich himself, and a businessman who entered the public space. We entered a public space to do a great job for our country and our people, right? Did anybody see the debate by any chance? They had a poll. I shouldn't say this, but I should. Maybe I should. 91% to 9%. And I'm saying, how did the 9% get in there? <laughs> For the last half century, Joe Biden has been outsourcing your jobs, opening your borders, and sacrificing American blood and treasure in endless, foreign, ridiculous wars. I fight for the middle class. Biden is, is you know what he does, right? I think he's fighting. He's actually fighting, I think, for Hunter. For the family. Biden and his cronies. What they've done is a disgrace. And frankly, what the media has done is more of a disgrace. Think of it. Think of it. There's never been, there's never been, there has never been a more egregious assault on our people, on our country, than what the media is doing, because they refuse to write about his corruption. And they'll write anything. They'll write falsely about us, but they refuse to write about his corruption. And now you can add big tech, add big tech. Section 230, add big tech. In 2016, Wisconsin voted to fire this depraved political establishment, and you elected an outsider as your president who is finally putting America first. We're doing it. I had a much easier life than this, I'll be honest with you. I thought this might have been a little bit easier. I didn't know the swamp was that deep and that vicious. They spied in my campaign. They did all sorts of things nobody could believe. It's never happened ever in the history of our country. And no president, this should never happen to another president. This should never, ever be allowed to happen to another president. Let's see what happens. And now on top of it, we have the Biden deal. Pretty crazy. But you know what? Nobody, no administration, listen to those, listen to that sound. It's coming so far away. Yeah. <laughs> this should never happen to another president again. It should never happen. They spied on our campaign. Long before I won, we won. And what's even worse, after we win, that's when it really got going. A bunch of really crooked, bad people. But you know what? That's draining the swamp one by one, one by one, one by one. But you never told me it was going to be like this. You work hard. You raise your families, you follow our laws, you support your church, you serve your community, and you give your love and loyalty to this country. Now you finally have a president that is loyal to you in return, and I am. I am. 
And by the way, uh, there's some interesting things happening. Look at them back there. Look at all those cameras. They're raring. They're raring to go. Look at all those lights. Uh, they're very nervous when I'm talking because, you know, that red light's on, and then they say, get ready to turn it off just in case. Get ready to turn it off. No, but they're uh, seeing things that are happening. Florida's looking great, you know? They're saying, what's going on in Florida? They're saying, what's going on in North Carolina? It's looking great, looking fantastic, right? It's looking great. What's going on in your Pennsylvania's looking great. Pennsylvania. We're a little worried about Philadelphia because a lot of bad things happened in Philadelphia over the years, you know? We gotta watch Philadelphia. I love Philadelphia. I went to school in Philadelphia, but we gotta watch it. There's a lot of things going on in Philadelphia. They're watching. They're all watching. And uh, Iowa is looking fantastic, right? Farmers. Nebraska looking great. No, the whole farm, the farmers are looking good. We did a lot for the farmers. $28 billion to the farmers from China, directly from China. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. No, it's looking good. Michigan today, right? You saw that? The poll, two points up in Michigan. Two points up. And a place called Wisconsin. You ever hear of Wisconsin? Up, way up. It's looking good. So let's see what happens, but they're getting a little nervous back there, the fake news. They don't like this. They said this wasn't supposed to happen. This is going even faster than it did four years ago. Remember that? Remember that great evening? Remember the great? Remember the great? We started with you very early. They announced you very early, right? They announced Wisconsin very early. But they had Florida. Florida has gone to Donald Trump, and they're going, oh my, what happened? Remember, we're supposed to lose Florida by a lot. Florida has gone to Donald Trump easily, actually, right? Remember Ohio? I just left Ohio. By the way, we got you your football. Congratulations today. Got Ohio. They had congratulations, too. Ohio State did great. You did great. I wouldn't want to come to one of these two places if you lost the game. Just so you know, I got, ten, I got the Big Ten back. I also got the Pac-12 back. And you know how that happened, right? Sleepy Joe Biden, when he heard they canceled the season, the Big Ten, I was working on China and other things, so if you don't mind, I didn't know too much about it. But they put out an ad or something that I was responsible for canceling Big Ten football, me. I said, what the hell do I have to do with it? So I said, tell me about Big Ten. They said, sir, I have a very good guy. Tim, where's Tim? Is he around here someplace? Tim Pataki, where's Tim? Where's Tim? He did a hell of a job. Anyway, I, give, I bring these young geniuses out. I said, Tim, we got to get it back. But anyway, so what happens? They said me. I said, what do I have to do with that? I said, what happened? Big Ten. It was canceled for the season. I said, why? These are young, strong guys, like Baron Trump. He got it. Yeah, he got it. But they believe it or not, they may not be as tall as Baron, and he's 14. But these are young, strong people. And, you know, Baron, they tested positive. And I said, oh, that's terrible. Baron, how you doing? He said, I don't I think I'm fine. I never, what's wrong? About 15 minutes later, I said, Doc, how's he doing? He's gone. He's perfect. He's perfect. It's all gone. And he was like, it was so fast. Young, young, strong immune systems, right? Go back to school. Let's go back to school. Go back to school. No, it's true. We tested positive, and then 15 minutes later, approximately, I said, how's he doing, Doc? He's fine. He's perfect. But that's what happens. First lady had it. She's doing well. I had it. Here I am. Here I am. Here I am in Wisconsin. Got to get back. You got to, we got to bring our country, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania. What do they have in common, right? North Carolina, Democrat governors who want to keep, watch, watch. On November 4th, on November 4th, they'll all announce, you're open for business, we're open. And you notice, they always go cases, cases. You know why cases? Because we do more testing 
than anybody. So Barron is a, it's a case. He's a young guy. Barron is a case. 99.9. .9. You know that, right? 99.9. .9. Barron's a case, and it's crazy. And you turn on and you say, cases have jumped. Cases, because we do. Now, if we did half the testing, we'd have half the cases. If we cut that in half, we'd have another half cut. We have the greatest testing in the world. The bad news is the fake news uses it as a means. They talk about that. Mortality down, mortality rate down 85%, because what we've done is incredible. What our doctors have done is incredible. Is incredible. And so I got it. They said, uh, sir, uh, excuse me, sir, you've just tested positive. I said, tested positive for what? <laughs> the hell do I have? They said, you've tested positive, sir. COVID. I said, you mean the China plague? Because that's where it comes from. And I didn't feel so great. I didn't feel so great. And I told the story two times in the last three days. I've done a number of these, you know. But you know why? Because we can't take any chances. We have to win. Some people said, how the hell do you do this? But there's a lot of love here. You know, it's easier when there's love, you can do it. If there wasn't, no, there's a lot of love. It's true. When there's love, right? Rick, is that Rick? I think, right? Yeah, my Rick. I can hardly see you. Thank you. Thank you. No, I don't mind doing it. People have said, how do you, how do, you do this? How do you do this? Because, you know, I'll do, I'm going to go actually in the last two or three days, I'm going to five of these. And then after it's over, I'm going to go back home. And if you don't mind, I'm going to sleep for a little while. Is that okay? <laughs> right? If you don't mind. But no, the one thing I learned, said it. When you're the President of the United States, there's no shortage of doctors. And so I'm not feeling good, and I'm in this bed, and I'm, uh, I felt, I haven't felt bad in a long time, but I didn't feel good. And I had just tested positive, so I'm surrounded by 12 doctors. 12, exactly 12. The best in the world. Johns Hopkins University, right? Johns Hopkins, great. Great, brilliant place. Uh, Walter Reed Medical Center, the greatest place, I'm telling you. These doctors, they're great. But they, I had so many doctors, and each one of them studied different parts of the body. <laughs> and I had a moment where almost every one of them was touching me simultaneously, and I, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. And anyway, I said, Doc, I want to get out of here. I got a campaign. I'm in the midst of a campaign against Sleepy Joe. I can, can you imagine lo Can you imagine losing to this guy? I can't do it. I said, I got to get going here. They said, sir, this is serious. I'm sorry. You'll have to just take it easy for a little while. I can't. Anyway, they gave me a thing called Regeneron, right? And we're making it available to anybody that needs it as soon as we can. We're doing an emergency use. And so what happened, they gave me Regeneron, and I wake up the next morning, and I felt like Superman. I ripped my shirt off. I want to go back. I want to go. We got to go and beat China, and we got to beat everybody. We got to beat everybody. No, it's true. I felt like Superman. I mean, it's amazing. They do a great job. They're just great people. But we got to get our country back to work. We got to get your, your place open. It's got to open. Your state has to open. Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Michigan. The only one that has freedom in Michigan is the governor's husband. Right? He's allowed to go boating. He's allowed to do whatever he wants, everybody else. But, you know, we won that big case. The Supreme Court of Michigan found it unconstitutional what she was doing. She was locking everybody up. And it's opening, and I think that's one of the reasons that I'm doing so well in Michigan, because we're fighting her and we're fighting it. And the bottom line, we have to be vigilant, we have to be careful, we have to be everything, but we also have to get our lives back, we have to take our country back. It's going away, it's rounding the turn. You know, the vaccines are coming, right? And they're gonna be really great. And the therapeutics are amazing, and maybe cures, I don't know, they call them therapeutics, but maybe cure this stuff I took. Either I got better myself or it was one hell of a medicine, I'll tell you. 
And I don't care which it was, but here I am, and we got back very quickly. Took a little time off. We took a little time off, and I actually probably feel better now than I did uh, before the thing happened. So, uh, but I appreciate you. This is an incredible crowd of people at this time of the night. Really incredible. It's an incredible group. And, and the people outside, or it's even more people outside, and it's just a, a fantastic feeling. You know, President Obama came onto the scene today, right? Barack Hussein Obama, he arrived to help Joe, because Joe's doing about, so I'm doing numerous of these a day. I was about to tell you, in the last two or three days, I said, let's do five. We can't take a chance. Five, you know what five is? Five rallies, these aren't like five, like say hello to five people. These are 25, 30, 35,000, we had a 41,000. And the only thing that stops us, look at the size. The only thing that stops us is the configuration. Or we could have tripled this number. In Ohio, we could have had four times, and this, it was just like this, but we could have had four times the number. The people on the streets, they couldn't get, it's amazing. Something's going on, and they see it. Something's going on. They see it. They just asked me at the plane, I did a little quick press conference, you know. I get ready. You got to get ready because if they, they're always, they're always going for the kill. Every question is the kill, the kill. <laughs> Let's see if we can get them with this one. You know, they've been trying. They've been trying for a lot of years, haven't they? They've been trying for a lot of years. But at the plane, and they said, you know, these crowds are incredible. It's really amazing. And they said, uh, one of them said, something's going on, and something is going on. There's a spirit for our country. I don't even think you saw this. I mean, I know for a fact. You didn't see this four years ago, because as good as four years ago, that was incredible, the best ever. The best ever. This is much better. This is stronger. This is stronger. This is stronger than it ever was. There has never been anything like it. There's never been anything like it, I was going to say. So Barack Hussein Obama showed up to help, to help Sleepy Joe. Because Sleepy Joe's only capable of doing one or two of these every three or four days, right? And he never leaves Delaware. I like Delaware very much. But he never leaves. It's uh, Joe Biden. I said, where is he going to be? Where? He's going to be in Delaware, about two minutes from his house, two minutes from the basement. So anyway, so I get a call, and they say, sir, I have a little bad news. What? Barack Hussein Obama has come in, and he's going to start campaigning for, for Sleepy Joe. I said, I said, let me ask you this. Look, he's coming in. He's coming in. But first of all, he didn't endorse him. You know, he was vice president, wouldn't endorse him. And then after he won, he wouldn't endorse him. You know, it took him like a long time, right? You know why? Because Obama was in shock that this guy won. <laughs> he was in shock. It took him about two months to figure out what the hell happened. He said, I can't believe it. First, he said, Joe, you don't have to do this. Remember the famous, Joe, Joe, don't do it. You don't have to do this. You don't have to run. Please, Joe, don't do it. And don't forget, this is his second or third attempt. And when he was at prime time, which was never very good, because any senator will tell you that his prime was not good. But in prime time, he got 1%. We used to call him 1% Joe. <laughs> and now that it's 50%, he's at 50%. And at 50%, he wins. You explain, is politics crazy or what? Yeah. And you know, on the debate, that last question about oil, Right? And I was very proud of myself because I went a whole thing and I was very nice. I got credit for being nice. <laughs> well, I, I got a lot of credit. Right? Right, Rick? Got a lot of credit. Because, you know, the first time I was more aggressive, which I happen to like better because you got to get it over with. You don't get it done. But you know who liked my performance the first time better? The Hispanics. And I'm doing great with. Hispanics, 78%. They love the first. They want that strong, they're tough, smart. But you know, so we go through the whole thing, and he made a little couple of mistakes, but he, it wasn't bad. And then the last question happened. I said, are you looking to get off oil? He said, yes, uh, we have to do that. I said, oh, you do? This is, this is a big moment. And I said, I hope you're watching Texas and Pennsylvania and 
And by the way, you don't have to worry about it quite as much. But you know what you do? You want to keep your gasoline down. You want to keep your heating bills down, right? But Ohio was watching, too, because they do a lot of fracking. And then I played a clip that some of you saw. I don't know if we'll have it up today, but I think it might be too cold to put it up if you want another show. But basically, he said all the way along, right? He talked about fracking. All the way along, we will not frack under any circumstance, right? I mean, you couldn't be. I said, he's really against fracking. Basically, he's against oil. You know, in Texas, he's against oil, guns, and God. And then the fake news said, they're doing very well in Texas. It's even. I don't think it's even. You know, I speak to the governor. This governor said, it's not even. It's not even close. But how, do you, how can you be against oil, right, gun, Second Amendment, and God? Amen. That's not a good, that doesn't work here either, by the way, does it? Uh, so anyway, so uh, he said he's against fracking, and then he gets the nomination because Elizabeth Pocahontas swore. <laughs> a super liberal decided that she hated Bernie and she wanted to destroy Bernie. Poor Bernie, this guy. He should get the award for sportsmanship. No, it happened twice, right? And he always takes it so well, you know? He's, he doesn't mind losing. He doesn't mind losing. He's a good sport. But it happened to him. She would, because had she gotten out before Super Tuesday, she took votes away from him. He would have won every single state. And instead of Sleepy Joe, we would have got against Crazy Bernie. Right? Crazy Bernie. But Bernie did us a lot of favors on Social Security. You saw that, where he, he revealed that Joe wanted to break up Social Security. You can't do that and be a politician. A lot of politicians are now lying by the wayside, having wanted to break, you know, really wanted to break up Social Security. That's it. And Medicare. And so we had that clip, and I played that. And we'll play it the next time I'm in Wisconsin. But this is going to be, in my opinion, the most important election in the history of our country. I really believe that. Because our country will never be a socialist nation. It will never be a socialist country. And that's where they want to take you. With your vote, we will continue to bring back your jobs, lower drug prices, I think it's cold here. You know, they said, sir, it's 32 degrees. It doesn't feel. We got a lot of warmth in here, right? But we're going to support our police, protect our Second Amendment. We will protect our Second Amendment, defend our borders. They want to have open borders. If you don't have borders, you don't have a country. I'm sorry. And ensure more products are proudly stamped with that beautiful phrase, made in the USA. We will deliver record prosperity. By the way, you got to get out and vote. I mean, I'm out here. What the hell time is it? And it's freezing. If I don't win this state, I'm going to come back, and I'm going to be very angry at you. Epic job growth, groundbreaking therapies, a safe vaccine that quickly ends the pandemic, by the way, with or without it, and we have it, great companies, but we're rounding the turn. Drives them crazy when I say it. We're rounding the turn. Cases, cases, always cases. They don't use the other words. I don't want to use the other words. I don't even want to talk about the other words. Because I thought Sleepy Joe was very dark when he talked about a dark winter. A dark winter. No, how dark was that? How terrible was that? They say, you sound too optimistic. They're always saying, I sound, that's right. That's right, because I love this country. We're optimists. And you know what? You know what? And I said it the other night at the debate. I don't want to put myself in a basement in the White House or, frankly, in a beautiful bedroom in the White House upstairs and lock myself in for a year and a half. Because we have work to do. We can't do that. We don't have that luxury. We can't put ourselves in a basement and say, no, we have to get out. We're running a great country. Our country next year will be greater than ever before. Look at what's happening. Our economy will be greater than ever before. You had the best, 
You had the best year you've ever had last year. You had the best year economically that you've ever had. You're safe. But almost, I can say it almost anywhere I go. You don't have to, like, Joe can't remember anything. This is one you don't have to. Just say, yeah, the best. Because every state in the country, just about, I think every state, had the best year they've ever had last year. You are going to have a better year this year coming up because you see some. The Atlanta Fed projected. Now, they may be wrong, but, you know, I think the highest ever was like 7 or 8 percent. 35 percent GDP increase. 35 percent. Nobody's ever heard of that. I told somebody, I'll take 25 right now, but guarantee it, right? 25 right now, 35 percent. Now, if they're right, good. If, they're, if it's at 20, if it's at 15, I mean, if it's anything like that. But they projected just on Friday, 35 percent GDP. The interesting thing is, guess when that comes out? On November 1st. It comes out on November 1st. So, so I'm willing to say, hold your vote just if it's anywhere near there, okay? Problem is, if it comes out at 25, they'll say, President Trump has failed to deliver. <laughs> I gave working families record-setting tax cuts, biggest tax cut in the history of our country. <laughs> and Sleepy Joe wants to raise the hell out of your taxes. This is the, so, so look. You know, I haven't been doing this very long, but I have been in politics. I've always been helping, you know, I've always been on the other side, right? But I've watched for a long time, and I've always watched politicians, we will cut your taxes. I mean, I've never seen Here's a politician, we will raise your taxes. What the hell? <laughs> I've never heard it before. He's the only politician I've ever seen that's going to give you the largest tax increase, tax increase in the history of our country. It's a quadrupling of taxes. And he's going to put all the regulations back, all the things that have created these jobs. Because, frankly, I think the regulations might have been more important even than the tax cuts. But all of those things that take 20 years to get a highway approved, we have it down to two, it's going to be down to one. And you may get rejected for environmental or safety reasons. But all of that stuff is going to go back, all of it. But it's the only politician I've ever seen saying he's going to raise your taxes. Who the hell wants that? They're going to get they're going to get your Second Amendment. They're going to obliterate your Second Amendment. Think of what they want to do. But as long as I'm here, your Second Amendment is safe. As long as I'm here. As long as I'm here, your tax cuts are safe. They want to take away your child tax credit. That's $1,000 a child that we got you. We got you. They want to take that away. As long as I'm here, all of that, because it has to go through the president, okay? So you don't have to worry about it. The election is a choice between a Trump super recovery, that's what we're having, or a Biden depression. If he gets in with this craziness that he's talking about, with these massive tax, and you know where the money's going? To the Green New Deal. They want to rip down thousands of buildings and rebuild them with very small windows. Very small. I want my beautiful window. I want my view. I don't want to have small windows. It is the craziest thing. Conceived and dedicated by AOC plus three, who I don't think she ever even studied the environment in school. She didn't study environment. Did AOC ever take a course in environment, Rick? I don't think so. The great Rick Grinnell. Does everybody know Rick? Whoa, Rick, that's big stuff. He's phenomenal. Oh, man, oh, man. He'd walk into that Justice Department. He was loaded up. He gave them so much stuff. He's the greatest. Thanks. I didn't know you were going to be here, Rick. What a job you've done. Thank you, Rick Grinnell. Thank you, everybody. It's a choice between a Trump boom and a Biden lockdown. He wants to lock it down. He was saying the other night, lock it. we're not locking anything down. We understand this disease. We're going to take care of our seniors and people that are really susceptible, especially seniors with diabetes, seniors with problems with the heart. You know, some countries, they report differently. If somebody's sick with a heart problem and they die of COVID, they say they died of a heart problem. If somebody's terminally ill with cancer and they have COVID, we report them. And you know, doctors get more money and hospitals get more money. Think of this incentive. 
So some countries do it differently. If somebody is very sick with a bad heart, they die of COVID, they don't get reported as COVID. So then you wonder, gee, I wonder why their cases are so low. This country and their reporting systems are really not doing it right. If somebody has a really bad heart and they're close to death, even if they're not, but they have a very bad heart and they get COVID, they put it down to COVID. Other countries put it down to a heart. So we have to be, uh, we're going to start looking at things because, you know, they have things, ba they have things a little bit backwards. They have things a little bit backwards. Joe Biden has made a corrupt bargain in exchange for his party's nomination. He has handed control of his party over to the socialists, communists, Marxists, and left-wing extremists, and they are. And they're filled with hatred, venom, and rage. They really are. I mean, you look at, you look at Portland, look at these uh, anarchists, right? You look at these anarchists, and we want to go into Portland so bad. You know, we do it, we do it, we've done it so. We go, Minnesota, we, we go in, and what we've done in Minnesota, what we've done all over, all over, wherever they, but we have to be invited, we have to be invited in. But Minneapolis, a week and a half, they're burning the hell out of the place. And then we, Kenosha, do I love Kenosha. Kenosha. I got the endorsement of the sheriff. I don't know if the sheriff's here. Where's the sheriff? Is he here? Where is the sheriff? I love that sheriff. We got the endorsement of everybody in Kenosha. You wouldn't have a Kenosha if there wasn't a Trump. That one we didn't wait. That one we didn't wait. You know, we have to be invited in. And actually, I must tell you, the governor was very nice. He did call and he said, okay, you can come in. I said, I wish you called a week ago. But we went in and we solved the problem. And I came back here, as you know, a little while later, and we met all of the law enforcement that did such a good job. But Kenosha, you wouldn't have a Kenosha right now. I mean, they burned down a few stores. We're working to get them built up, right? We're working to get them built up. But uh, we did a great job. But we went into Minneapolis also. That was a week and a half. And it was terrible, the damage that was done. But it was sort of a beautiful thing. World's most expensive uniforms. They come in, they have helmets across the fortune. There is more computers in those helmets. So they come in, and you have one, two, not socially distanced, by the way. They were right, and they'd stand next. And then you'd have black, black uniforms. And then you had another line, another line, another line. And these were really bad people. And you had CNN, whoops, the light just went off. <laughs> that light goes off. As soon as they hear the word CNN, boom, the light goes off. No, you had the CNN, the, uh, you know, shaves his head. Maybe I'll do my hair that way. CNN sucks! CNN sucks! CNN sucks! CNN sucks! CNN sucks! No, you have CNN and the guy, what's, I don't know who he is. It, it, Ali Velchi, right? Velchi. I hate to give him the publicity, but who the hell cares, right? And he's going, he's in, right? He's in Minneapolis. And I'm reporting from Minneapolis, where it's a very peaceful demonstration. And you look behind him, right? The entire city is burning out. It looked like Berlin at its worst day. The entire city, and he's talking about, this is a peaceful. And then he got hit on the knee by a canister of tear gas, right? And he went down, he's down. And honestly, I felt very badly that he was down, okay? I felt very badly that he was down, but he got hit by, I think, either pepper spray or a canister of tear gas. He went down. I've never seen anyone go down so fast. <laughs> anyway, then these guys, they lined up. They came in. They lined up, lined up, four lines, very tight, boom, beautiful-looking people, and then they just walked. That was the end of it. It ended, right? That was the end of it. The only thing easier would be Portland. Those are anarchists. You know, those are real anarchists. And they would be so easy. They've been burning down that city for 15 years. Portland. It would be so easy. If Biden wins, the flag-burning rioters on the streets will be running your federal government. You know, I signed a law. You knock down a statue. You knock down a monument. You go to jail for 10 years. Took an old law. It's amazing what that did. You know, did you notice it all stopped? You know, they were coming in all over the country. They're knocking down statues. They're knocking down statues. Then it goes, uh, Abe Lincoln. I said, what did Lincoln do wrong? <laughs> right? Lincoln, George Washington.
They want to take down the Washington Monument. I said, no, thank you. I think we'll keep it. <laughs> now, these people, they got a lot of problems. This election day, the people of Wisconsin must stop these anti-American radicals by giving Joe Biden a thundering defeat at the ballot box. Now, it's not Biden. Just so you if, look, it's not Biden. You know that. It's the people that totally control him. He's not going to be there long. They love their vice president. She's the only one that's considered much further left than Crazy Bernie, okay? He's got somebody. You know, she was so nasty and so horrible to him. And I said, he'll never pick her because what she said about him was so terrible. Everything she said was terrible. And then he picked her, and I just don't know what's going on with that party. That party's a mess. But their numbers are dropping like a rock. And mine are going up, but I don't know which is more important, mine going up or theirs dropping. I don't know, but they're dropping. But they were saying, I was saying before, they were saying, uh, do you have any comments as to what's going on with the numbers? I said, I told you this was going to happen. You don't remember four years ago, this is just going to be a bigger version. We're going to win by a lot more. We win by a lot more. Biden is constantly lies, and he said he won't defund the police. He's going to leave the police alone. He also won't tell you the truth about his decades-long quest to cut Social Security and Medicare. But we have tapes, one on the police and one on Social Security and Medicare. Please play the video. See what I do for you? I get video. Do you believe there is systemic racism in law enforcement? Absolutely. Joe Biden's staffers, they gave money to a fund to help bail out accused criminals. Kamala Harris was working to help the instigators, the criminals, get out of jail. Everyone beware, because they're not going to stop. The only person who defended the police is Trump. I have had overwhelming support from police my whole career up until this year. We can reduce the responsibilities assigned to the police and redirect some of the funding for police. Can we agree that we can redirect some of the funding? Yes, uh, absolutely. Let me ask you a question, Joe. Yeah. You're right here with me. Yeah. Have you been on the floor of the Senate? You were in the Senate for a few years. Yeah. Time and time again, talking about the necessity with pride about cutting Social Security, cutting Medicare, cutting veterans' programs. No. You never said that? No. When I argued that we should freeze federal spending, I meant Social Security as well. I meant Medicare and Medicaid. I meant veterans' benefits. I meant every single solitary thing in the government. Look, here's the deal. You're an honest guy. Why don't you just tell the truth here? We all I, make mistakes. I, I am telling the truth. And I not only tried it once, I tried it twice, I tried it the third time, and I tried it the fourth time. Joe, let me repeat it again. I want you just to be straight with the American people. I am saying that you have been on the floor of the Senate time and time again talking about the need to cut Social Security, Medicare, and veterans programs. Is that true or is that no, not true? No, it's not true. What that is, is not true? That is not true. I meant veterans, but I meant every single solitary thing in the government. Everything was on the table. I did not support any of those cuts in Social Security or in veterans. Whoa, benefits. whoa, whoa. You, you, everything was on the table. All right, you're right. You just said it, including, in your judgment, cuts to Social Security and veterans. In order to get the kinds of changes we need on other okay. things related. Joe, but, it just, didn't, but we did not cut it. I, I know, because people like me helped stop that. All that I would say to the American people, go to YouTube. It's all over the place. Joe said it many, many times. I'm surprised, you know, you can defend the, the, or change your mind on it, but you can't deny the reality. And he will cut your Social Security. Think of it. No politician can cut Social Security. And he tried. And thank you very much, Bernie Sanders. I thought you were excellent. We should be running against Bernie. Who would we do better with, Bernie or Joe? Who would you rather have? I think maybe. Bernie's, Bernie's a little bit sharper. As long as I'm president, I will always protect Medicare and Social Security, and I will always stand with the heroes of law enforcement. And no one is hurt more by Democrats 
than the war and police, than the African Americans. They're hurt more than anybody. They're hurt more than anybody. And that's one of the great things about the debate the other night. It really showed what was happening with minority communities, with Hispanic. With, it was incredible. Some of the answers he gave were so bad. In just four Democrat-run cities, over 1,000 African Americans were murdered last year. Think of it. Joe Biden and the radical left totally ignore these victims. I never will. I never will. Biden wants to abolish cash bail, releasing more than 400,000 criminals onto the streets, many into your community. He wants to eliminate mandatory minimum sentencing, even for the most heinous crimes, for murderers, for rapists. Biden would disarm law-abiding Americans and turn the entire country into one giant sanctuary for criminal aliens. I mean, a, a one giant sanctuary. It's so bad. It's so dangerous. Our police are so against it. Before I came into office, corrupt Washington politicians callously turned a blind eye to criminal gangs that broke into our country, terrorized our communities, and preyed upon innocent Americans, including MS-13 gangs, probably the worst of them all. And by the way, if we didn't have our Border Patrol and if we didn't have ICE, they would be running rampant all over our cities, all over our states. We have removed thousands and thousands of MS-13 and brought them the hell out of our country, back to the thousands. And working for ICE, these are, you know, ICE is, uh, they're heroes. They really are, and they're tough as hell, but they love our country. And I mean, I see some of my friends up here, they're tough too. You don't want the job. They will go into what they call a nest. And all of a sudden, you see fists flying. You see everything going. And then our guys walk out, and they bring them out. Sometimes they can't bring them out. They're so dangerous, we don't want to take a chance. They come back. So we end up putting them in jail for a long time. And it's not a good situation, because we have to pay a fortune for it. But we can't bring them back, because we don't trust the places we're bringing them. Today, we're tremendously honored to be joined by more than 300 brave men and women of law enforcement. I especially want to recognize Danilo Cardenas, who is a very, very special person. He's a national Latino police officers, officers, Milwaukee chapter, a fantastic man. Pat Yoz of the Fraternal Order of Police and Sage Hill of the National Troopers Coalition. I have the endorsement, these groups, and almost every group all over the country. New York City's finest endorsed me. First time they've ever endorsed a presidential candidate. New York City's finest. And all they want to do is do their job. They want to do their job, but they don't want to do their job and lose their pensions, lose their families, lose their life. Chicago police endorsed me. Florida, Texas, Oklahoma, every place. I asked Joe in one of the debates, the uh, first one, I said, Joe, just name one law enforcement group that's endorsing you. He couldn't do it. Then I said, Joe, say the words, law and order. Just say the words. He couldn't do it, right? Couldn't do it. No, I don't want to do that. Oh, really? You don't want to do that? No. And we're saving the suburbs. You know, they say, President Trump may not be doing well with suburban women. I said, I think I'm doing very well. <laughs> I was given a phony interview, so I released the whole tape. I was given because we had our cameras shooting, too. That was pretty cool, actually, because you can see how horrible these people are. But I was given a, an interview, and the person doing it, who cares? But the person doing it said, you were pleading I, with suburban women. I said, I wasn't pleading. No, you were saying, please, please like me. No, I said this. I said, suburban women, you should love me for what I'm doing, because I'm saving the suburbs. I'm saving the suburbs. Unless you want a project near you. Do you ever see these things where they have the beautiful little houses and every and by the way, 30% of the people living in the suburbs are minority groups. African American, Asian American, Hispanic American. So it's their American dream. It's their American dream. It's your 
Did you see the clip though, where they have a little house, another little, and then they have like a six-story building that goes, and low income, and a lot of crime, and it's been a horror. And I was told I can change the rule. And my people told me Ben Carson's fantastic. He said, right? He said, sir, why don't we just amend the rule? I said, nope, we have to terminate it, get rid of it. It's really bad. It's a regulation, a very bad regulation. He said, well, we could just do it. I said, here's the problem. If we do that, it'll never be good enough. Terminate it. I got rid of it. So suburban women, you better love Donald Trump. You better love Donald Trump. Got rid of him. And I think they do. Well, this happened in the last election, remember? Women will never vote for Donald Trump. This is, you know, they're great geniuses. This is four years ago. Women will not vote for Donald Trump. I said, why, am I so bad? Am I so bad, right? So bad. Women will never vote, and then the election's over, and they're all in a state of shock. Some are crying, some are, like, totally gonzo. And what was one of the big factors? Women voted by leaps and bounds for Donald Trump. And this time, it's going to happen even more so, because what we're doing in terms of crime, in terms of law and order, in terms of the regulation in the suburbs, but in terms of so much, we're going to do even more so. That's why the crowds are much bigger than they were ever. And we had big crowds. We had crowds like nobody's ever seen. These crowds are ridiculous, okay? <laughs> if you want to raise your children in safety, you must defeat Sleepy Joe Biden on November 3rd. <laughs> He's a beauty. He's a beauty. I tell you, how the hell that ever happened, I don't know. I have the privilege of running against perhaps the single worst candidate in the history of presidential politics, which puts a lot of pressure on me. It puts a tremendous amount of pressure. I'd rather run against a good, possibly even a great candidate because if something happens, you don't feel so bad. Can you imagine losing to this guy? Can you imagine? You better not do that to me, Wisconsin. You know, you know, if we win Wisconsin, we win. That's a big deal. We win Wisconsin. We win Wisconsin, it's over. So in addition to the great Rick Grinnell, we're joined by Warriors, Brian Style. Brian, Brian, doing a great job. Thank you, Brian. And Glenn Grothman. Glenn, thank you, Congressman. And a great congressional candidate, F. Scott Fitzgerald. I'd like to say, can I add F? Scott Fitzgerald. I know F. Scott. F. Scott Fitzgerald. Great, Scott. I heard you're doing well. I heard you're doing really well. Wisconsin GOP Chairman Andrew Hitt, who's been fantastic. How are we doing? Uh, we're doing good, Andrew? Great. We better do good. You'll be fired so fast, Andrew. <laughs> he said we're doing great. We are doing good. We're doing good. We should be doing good. For decades, our politicians spent trillions of dollars rebuilding foreign nations, fighting foreign wars, and defending foreign borders. But we are now finally protecting our nation, rebuilding our cities, and we are bringing our jobs, our factories, and our troops back home where they belong, back to the USA. Back home. We're bringing our troops back home. It's enough. 19 years in Afghanistan. And they're acting as police. We No, they have to have their own police. 19 years in Afghanistan, and they're the greatest fighters in the world, and now they have the greatest equipment in the world. You know, when I took over, it was depleted. 2.5 trillion made in the USA, a lot of it in Wisconsin, by the way. This week, I signed an order to protect the pensions of workers at the Delphi Corporation. Does anybody know about that? These workers were taken advantage of very badly when GM went bankrupt. Biden and Obama threw these workers to the wolves. Their pensions were totally wiped out. They were treated very unfairly. My order is the first step to restoring the pensions and health care benefits promised to workers in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Ohio. 
because I will never let anyone rip off our great American workers. We're going to take care of our workers, and we should take care of our workers. So Delphi, is there anybody from Delphi here? I know I have your vote, but I'm not doing it for that reason. I'm doing it because what they did to you, look at that, that's quite a few people. Uh, what they did to you was very unfair. They lied to you. They lied to you. I ended the NAFTA nightmare and proudly signed the brand new USMCA into law, and it's just kicked in, and it's great. One of the most important things that makes it prohibitive for companies to leave Wisconsin or any other place and go to Mexico or Canada, it's very costly for them to do that, thank you. Wisconsin dairy farms were decimated under Obama-Biden. Under the USMCA, our dairy exports to Canada are expected to surge by 50 to 100 percent and very quickly. And I can't say that Canada is thrilled about the deal, but that's the way it is. And I said, you either do this or we're going to maybe do something to you with the tariffs or the cars coming in. You know? No, they were very nice. They were very nice. Biden is controlled by Wall Street because they know he'll return the pro-China, pro-outsourcing policies that have always been so destructive to our country. There is no country, there is no anything that has ripped off the United States like for 25 years China has done. Billions and billions and billions of dollars a year and I give China a lot of credit. I wish our people did it the other way, right? But they didn't do it. And I'm not just talking about Obama. I'm talking about long before Obama, others also. Obama was bad. They were all bad. But we changed it, and it's changing fast. And we did a great trade deal. They had the largest order two weeks ago, three weeks ago. They had the largest order of corn, soybeans, cattle, beef. They had the largest in the history, but the China deal. But the ink wasn't dry on our trade deal with China, and the plague came in from China. So I view it much differently than I would have viewed it. I would have been very happy about the largest order of corn. They want to keep me happy. I guess they think I'm going to win. But they will hope like hell I'm not. Can you imagine? Would they be happy if I didn't win? Yeah, I think so. A lot of countries would be happy. You know, they did a study that in Germany, they like President Obama much more than President Trump. Well, that means I'm doing a good job. It's true. That means I'm doing a good job. I, I think you should say that with most. And you know, I tell other countries, because with me, it's America first. And I tell other countries, and because they'll come, they'll say, sir, that's very tough. Well, they've never heard that before, right? <laughs> they've never heard America first. I said, no, no, it's America first. And your country should be first, too. You should say whatever your country is first. But we can't do this anymore. We're not going to do it anymore. We'll help and we'll do things. But it's America first. If Biden wins, China wins. And China, if Biden wins, China will own the USA. You know, China was supposed to, in 2019, I tell this all the time because I've seen it for years. Ten years ago, you go back and look. In 2019, China was going to take over the U.S. The economy was going to be much larger than ours. And I got involved three and a half years ago, almost four years ago, and it was just the reverse. We were going up leaps and bounds. We were doing better. We tariffed them. We did all sorts of things. But they were supposed to catch us, right? 2019, for years they were saying 2019, 2019. Didn't work out that way, but then we had the plague came over. And we will never forget it. We will never, ever forget it. If we win, Wisconsin wins. If we win, America wins. It's very simple. Under my leadership, we achieved the most secure border in U.S. history, and we are now finishing the wall. It's almost complete. We're doing 10 miles a week. And Mexico is paying for the wall. You know, they like to say. They like to say, you know, you don't hear about the wall anymore. You know, now that it's built, we have record numbers, all that stuff. And this is the wall that the Border Patrol wanted. We sat down. Yeah, we gave them everything. Cost a little more money. They wanted steel, not concrete. I figured we could put up concrete plank. They didn't like that. We did everything they wanted. We have an incredible wall, all technologically wired and hooked up. Everything is great. But it was very important. But you don't hear about the wall anymore from the fake news media. They don't talk because we got it. So now the other day, not the other day, a couple of months ago, but now they know that's, that one's dead too. 
I said, we're building the wall. It's better. It's great. It's the best wall, all that stuff, right? And they said, but Mexico is not paying for it. I said, they never fail. So Mexico is paying for it, and that's the way it is. They're paying a border tax. That's okay. They're paying a border tax. They're paying for the wall. And Mexico, by the way, has been great. You know, Mexico has 27,000 soldiers on our border guarding us from people coming into our country. How about that? <laughs> President of Mexico is doing a good job. It's not easy. They're heavily uh, infected. The COVID has been very tough for them, very, very tough. And frankly, it's a great time to have the wall. But Mexico has been very, uh, really hit hard, hit very hard in a lot of ways. But he's a great gentleman. And a great, I think he's going to be a great president, too. Joe Biden has vowed that he wants open borders, mass amnesty, and free health care for illegal aliens. If Joe and Kamala are elected, it will trigger a tsunami of illegal immigration, the likes of which you've never seen, from every corner of the world, overwhelming every community in America, including your very beautiful community. You know, we all have a heart. We want to take care of people. But when you say we're going to give you free education, free health care, free everything, millions of people are going to come here, people that weren't even thinking about it. They're going to come. We can't do it. That will destroy your Social Security. That will destroy your Medicare. The radical left isn't trying to lead America. They're trying to burn it down. You just take a look at what's going on. Only your vote can save America. This is the most important election. I never thought I'd ever say it. I never thought I'd say it after what we went through four years ago. I said, that's going to be the most important. This is more important. It's like a tree. You move the tree. It takes a while to really catch on. You know, we did a lot of things, and we have more to do. There's more taxes. We're cutting more taxes. That's why so much is coming into the country. Billions and billions of dollars is pouring into our country, not into other countries. All of the things we've done has been so great, but it takes a while to catch on, just like a tree. It takes a little while. But in addition, we're doing additional tax cuts, many, many more regulation cuts. We have a long way to go. You know, we have statutory procedures where you have to wait six months before you do phase two. You have to wait another two months after you do that. But we have a lot of additional regulation cuts uh, to come, and so important. I actually do believe, I really do believe, more important than the tax cuts. We invested $2.5 trillion in the U.S. military, including nearly $6 billion to save the historic shipyard. Marinette Marine, you know Marinette? And I was there a few months ago, and I'll tell you, Marinette, they built beautiful. These are beautiful. These are uh, speedy, I call them speedy destroyers. That's what they are. They are gorgeous. They look like yachts, but better. They look like yachts with a lot of weapons on them. If you want to know. They got a hell of a lot of weapons on them. Wisconsin will now build the next generation of American warships, creating 1,000 jobs, going up to 2,000, 3,000, and even 4,000 at the shipyard and thousands of more jobs throughout your state. We killed the leader of ISIS, al-Baghdadi. Everybody was after al-Baghdadi. And we then took out the mass murder of American troops and many, many people, many troops from many countries. Soleimani is dead. He's gone. I withdrew from the last administration's disastrous Iran nuclear deal. $150 billion for nothing. $1.8 billion in cash. That's more impressive. $1.8 billion in cash. We got nothing. I withdrew. And the first call I get, if we win, is going to be from the head of Iran. Their economy is crashing. The sanctions that we put on have been very biting, to put it mildly. They will call and they will make a deal and we'll help them because I want to help them. I want them to be so successful, but they cannot have a nuclear weapon. It's very simple. I recognize the true capital of Israel and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. And instead of never ending wars in the Middle East, we're forging peace in the Middle East. We just signed. 
We just signed another country yesterday. You saw that, Sudan. So now we have United Arab Emirates, headed by a great warrior, a great leader, Mohammed, a great leader. And uh, Bahrain, you saw that. And now we have Sudan, and we have uh, many more that are waiting to come in. It's amazing. This was all said by the great geniuses that we dealt with. It can't be done that way. I said, no, it can't be done the way they've been trying to do it for 40 years. And we have many, many more that are ready to sign up. I did more in 47 months than Joe Biden did in 47 years. A vote for Republicans is a vote for safe communities, great jobs, a limitless future for all Americans. Frankly, it's a vote for the American dream. That's what it is. Party of Abraham Lincoln, don't ever, you know, I say it all the time. Everyone thinks that Abraham Lincoln was a Democrat. No. Abraham Lincoln was a great Republican. And in conclusion, over the next four years, we will make America into the manufacturing superpower of the world. And we will end our reliance on China. It's already started once and for all. We'll be doing it ourselves. We'll be making it right here in Wisconsin and other places. We will hire more police, increase penalties for assaults on law enforcement, and we will ban deadly sanctuary cities. We will uphold religious liberty, free speech, the right to life, and the right to keep and bear arms, Second Amendment. We will strike down terrorists who threaten our citizens. We have people, they want to threaten our citizens. You see what happened in France two days ago. Horrible thing. President Macron is uh, devastated by this. We're not going to have it. And we will keep America out of endless foreign wars. They never end. We will maintain America's unrivaled military might. And we will ensure peace through strength. That's what we have. Now. And that 2.5 trillion, the greatest equipment anywhere in the world. Nobody, we're the envy of the world. We have the hydrosonic super missiles where they go seven times faster than the fastest missile we have right now. They're so fast. Uh, by the way, you never want to use them. We have missiles, rockets, tanks. The F-35s, all new planes, stealth, all new planes, ships, submarines. We have all of our nuclear has been redone. Hope to God we never have to use it. Just hope to God that we never have to use it. But we've never been in this position. When I came into office, one of the world's most overrated generals said, Sir, we have no ammunition. I said, no president should ever hear that again. And now we have so much ammunition, we don't know what to do with it. We will end surprise medical billing, require price transparency, all signed up and ready to go on January 1st. Lower drug prices even more. You know, we had the first decrease last year. In the last 52 years, it was only 1%, but it was a decrease. But we're going favored nations who have the lowest prices in the world to match. And the drug companies don't like me. That's why you have all those commercials on television. Big Pharma, it's very powerful, a lot of money, unlimited. They are doing commercials because I did something. You're going to have 50, 60, 70, 80 percent reduction in prescription drug prices. It had to be done. Because I don't, I don't work for them. And we will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions. We will stop the radical indoctrination of our students and restore patriotic education to our school. And we will teach our children to love our country, honor our history, and always respect our great American flag. And we will live by the timeless words of our national motto, in God we trust. For years, you had a president who apologized for America. Now you have a president who is standing up for America and standing up for the great people of Wisconsin.
For the last four years, you have seen me fight for you. And now I am relying on you to deliver another historic victory for our country. Vote early. Go out and vote. Bring your friends, bring your family, your neighbors, your co-workers. Get out and vote. This is the most important election that we've perhaps ever had. From Green Bay to Kenosha, I feel a warmness. I love Kenosha. I love Kenosha. You know why? I feel like there's just a feeling. I saved it. I'm telling you, Kenosha was gonzo. And how beautiful a sight was that, right? They walked in. That was the end of that. Our guys walked in. That was the end. So from Green Bay, by the way, good football team you have. Good football team. To Kenosha, from Madison to Milwaukee, for Janesville to right here, right here where we're all together. What a group of people. We're all freezing our asses off of that stuff. We inherit the legacy of red-blooded American patriots who poured out their heart, sweat, and soul to secure our liberty and defend our freedom. We stand on the shoulders of American heroes who crossed the oceans, blazed the trails, settled the continent, tamed the wilderness, laid down the railroads, dug out the Panama Canal, raised up the great skyscrapers, won two world wars, defeated fascism and communism, and made America the single greatest nation in the history of the world and the best is yet to come. Proud citizens like you help. USA, 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 Thank you. Proud citizens like you help build this country. And together, we are taking back our country. That's what we're doing. We're taking back our country from some very horrible people that have brought our country to that ledge. But we're never going off that ledge. It's going now the other way. Nobody ever told me the swamp was so deep. Nobody ever said it was so vicious. But you know what? We're here together. We're here. They're not. We're doing very well. Uh, they are not happy, but we're going to have a tremendous win, and that's going to be the end of it. Then they're going to say they're going to be exhausted. They are going to be. This is a fight they never expected. They were taking us down a bad path. We are returning power to you, the American people. With your help, your devotion, and your drive, you have a lot of drive, we are going to keep on working. We are going to keep on fighting. And we are going to keep on winning, winning, winning. All right? We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together with the incredible people of Wisconsin, we have made America powerful again, our military. We have made America wealthy again, our stock markets and your 401ks. Make sure they don't come crashing down when they raise your taxes like you've never seen before. We have made America strong again. We have made America proud again. We have made America safe again. And we will make